thing that gives me stability yeah. is the thing that I can hold on to. Yeah. He says that there's the evidence of things not seen. Yeah. Therefore, I mean saying that, that faith is an extra eye that sees what the natural eye can't see. I can't see the limits with these two pupils in my head. But somehow I see it in the spirit. And I believe that somehow or another God is, is going to take what is outside of time and fit it into the fabric of my life. I think really what, what he's telling us is that God is greater than any situation. God is greater than anything that confronts us. And then I thought about faith from, from another perspective. I thought about faith in, in the dynamic of my own life. Came up, I think, with my own definition from my own life's experience. And truth is, all of us all have our own definition of faith based upon the journey that God has brought us through and where God has brought us from. All of us ought to have our own little spin because God has done something different in every one of our lives. And I, I thought about faith and when I thought about faith, I decided that, that faith is the limit of what God can do. And I know when you, when you use that kind of terminology, Jesus, my some, God. Some perhaps uh, got nervous when I made that statement. Yeah. Some didn't want to say amen when I made oh that statement. I know why. Somebody in the room said, how, how dare any preacher use faith and limitations in the same sentence. But, but I still hope that that faith is the limit of what God can do. I remember when, when I was a little child, I came up at Clinton Street Radio Beth Lamb Temple in Detroit. And uh, I remember there was a large congregation there, founded and pastored by the late Bishop Hancock. And I came in on the cusp of that as a young child. And we had a, a, a children's church that met every Sunday. They met over in another part of the building called the Rochester Chapel. We'd go over there Sundays and we'd have our little service. And I remember being over there we were under the tutelage of, of different individuals. And truth is, I don't remember every comment that was made, every statement that was made. Truth is, I forgot oftentimes much of what was said. But there were some statements that stayed with me. And there was one statement. You know what pays to take your children to church? Amen. Pays. Can I get a witness in here? Anybody remember the day when church was not an option? Amen. Amen. You know, everybody uh, didn't get up on Sunday morning and go their separate ways. And your mother didn't come to your room and ask you where you're going today. But, but, but church was mandatory. Amen. And you know, I really think that the world would be a better place and church might be a better place if, if, if we was living by that principle of back in the day. House I was raised in, there were uh, uh, nine of us, amen, plus the mother and the father. And I remember quite well, amen, you didn't start getting ready for church on Sunday morning, you got ready for church on Saturday night. I must be in the wrong church here. You know what I'm talking about? Amen. Saturday night, you got ready for Sunday morning. My house, you took your bath. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing. Saturday night. So that you wouldn't be slow poking Sunday morning. Sunday morning, you washed your face, you brushed your teeth. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Got you a quick bowl of oatmeal. Went back upstairs, put your clothes on, and you better be in the car on time. But today is a kind of different scenario. But I remember that. We went to church. Not only did we go to church, we went to Sunday school. I'm not going to go there. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. And, and I know, I know somebody said, well, we're working now. But truth is, black women always been working. My mama, my mama all 
always work. Hello, sir. She wasn't sitting at a desk working a computer. She was scrubbing the other woman's floor and raising her children. But I'm gonna leave all that. But but we went to church and we went every Sunday. And we went over to that children's church every Sunday morning. And, and there was one statement that was made and never left my spirit. And I'm gonna tell you the truth, the reason it never left my spirit was because this man said the same thing every Sunday. You know, you can learn a whole lot through redundancy. Can I get a witness in here? Repetition, can I get a witness? And he said it every Sunday. And so I never could forget it because he confronted us with it every Sunday. The statement that he made was on this wise. He, would, he said this, he would say, children, God will be whatever you want him to be. All right. Then he would come back and he would dress it up. He said, if you want him to be a big God, he'll be a big God. Right, yeah. He said, if you want him to be a medium-sized God, he'll be a medium-sized God. He said, if you want God to, to be a small God, he'll be a small God. He said, he'll, he'll be whatever you want him to be. I didn't realize the full import of what he was saying. I, just thought it was a nice thing to say. I didn't realize that it was biblical, that it was grounded and founded in scripture. I thought he was just telling us something. Put it on our mind. But when I got a little older, started thumbing through the scripture one day. And I came upon the scripture where, where there was a man that needed a miracle from Jesus. And I remember that as he sat there in need, Jesus made a statement to that man. And the statement he made was, according to thy faith, be it unto you. I come to tell somebody tonight that, that your miracle will be no bigger than your faith. Your deliverance, y'all ain't gonna talk to me tonight, will be no bigger than your faith. You, you, you must, must exercise faith in God in order to get something out of God. And the reason some folk aren't getting anything is because they don't have any faith. The reason other folk are getting just a little bit trickle down, y'all ain't gonna talk to me, is because they only have a little bit of faith. And the reason some folk get somewhere in between is because they got in between faith. But then the other folk that are getting everything from God because they got an everything faith that says God can do anything but fail. I just, I wish I had me in prayer church. Let me, let me just see the hand if there's anybody that, that believes God. That if you believe it, look somewhere and tell somebody, I believe God. Tell them, tell them, tell them I've been to hell and back, but I believe God. Oh yes. You got to have that kind of faith that is resilient. You got to have that kind of faith that, that will weather the storm. And I may as well drop this on you. Faith is not faith until it has been tried. Woo! Yes, sir! Faith is not faith until it has been stretched. I'm going to say this to you. Faith is not faith until you almost come to the point of unbelief. Standing on the edge of giving up, doubting God, but yet faith stands up for you on the edge. I wish I had a praying church and you pray that prayer, Lord, I believe. But help thou my unbelief. is going to 